There are secret permissions on your Android that any app can access and you can't do anything about it. For example, any app on your phone can read or modify your clipboard, show you toast messages, or even access your biometric hardware. And there's nothing within Android's permission manager to stop them. So I had to turn to AppOps, an app that lays out all the cards on the table and shows me every hidden permission each app is accessing and even lets me toggle off any of those hidden permissions right then and there. There's just one small catch. AppOps and all the other 14 apps that I'll show off in this video require the Shizuku app to work. If you're not sure what that is, it's a free app on the Play Store that helps bridge the gap between applications and your phone system APIs. In many ways, it gives you some of the same freedoms as if you had root access, but you don't actually need it. Think of it like the Magisk app, but for non-rooted users. Plus, it's really easy to set up and only takes a few minutes. I'll teach you how to do that towards the end of the video. Another app that I find useful is Better Internet Tiles, since it enhances the Quick Settings panel. For instance, it brings back the NFC tile, which is surprisingly missing on some devices like the Google Pixels. Another annoyance is that ever since Android 12, the Wi-Fi and mobile data settings have been combined into a single tile known as Internet. And it's annoying because tapping it won't turn anything off. It'll instead launch a menu where you can then disable those connections. It just adds an extra unnecessary step. So thanks to better internet tiles, those connections can be separated and tapping either one will toggle them on or off, as they should. Or you can use their custom internet tile, which helps keep the Wi-Fi and mobile data combined, but tapping it switches between the Wi-Fi and mobile data, much more intuitive than bringing up the entire menu. Also, a great way to modify your phone is by using these new material designed wallpapers that we just created. They will make any home screen pop. Plus, combine them with our new widgets and you got yourself a next level setup. Only on my Patreon, link down below. Rootless James DSB is another useful app that works with Shizuku to improve your device's audio. Whether you have your headphones on or are just jamming out through the phone's speakers, you can adjust the audio settings any way you like, including the dynamic range, bass boost, soundstage wideness, crossfeed, virtual room effect, and many more. Not many Android equalizers are this powerful or work on a system level. Unfortunately, some apps such as Spotify and Google Chrome don't support rootless James DSB because they block any internal audio captures. However, it does work well on other popular apps like YouTube, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Deezer, Twitch, and many more. A big thumbs up for that. Check this out. Whenever I long press this app called Reboot Menu, I can quickly access the power menu or the lock screen. And if I have root, I can get even more shortcuts like accessing the bootloader or restarting the phone into recovery mode. Drag these shortcuts into their own icons and now you can do things much faster without needing to touch any of your side buttons. It's especially helpful if your power button's broken. One of the best ways to save battery on your phone is to stop apps that you rarely use from running in the background. Icebox is an excellent solution because it lets you freeze apps so that they only run when you open them. You just select the apps you want to freeze, and then once you swipe for approval, those apps will no longer appear in your app drawer and can only be accessible through Icebox's menu, which you can also lock behind a fingerprint verification. And when these apps are frozen, they won't be able to access your data, run in the background, send you notifications, or cause any battery drain. It's almost like uninstalling them. The only annoyance is that you can only freeze up to 10 apps before you need to pay $4 to freeze even more. So a great alternative that is completely free is Amarok. It does the same exact thing, there's just no fingerprint lock, which is a bit of a drawback. However, it does let you hide files as well, which is really useful. Brew Activity Launcher is also another alternative that allows you to freeze and hide as many apps as you'd like for a dollar, with root access, you can even freeze an app's activities, services, or receivers instead of the entire application. So it can be more powerful than the previous two options. Also, I just thrown a bunch of promo codes on my Patreon for Icebox and Brew Activity Launcher so that you can snag them for free. Don't wait around, head over there and sign up to score those two awesome deals for the price of one. Another great mod that I love to use is at my site. It's a user-friendly platform that allows anyone to create a mobile app within minutes with no coding experience required. Regardless of your technical abilities, you can easily build an app that suits your needs. 
It lets you turn any website into a functional app so that you can access it much more quickly. Here's how to do it. First, you need to sign up on the App My Site through the top link in the description. Then enter your website URL and personalize your app's look and feel. You can also choose what content to display and adjust settings, including layouts, user behavior, and colors. If you want to get technical with it, the platform even supports integrations with Firebase, chat software, Google AdSense, and other tools. Once you're done tweaking things around, you can preview your app on the website and then build it into an APK, AAB, or IPA to try it out on your Android or iPhone. App My Site even makes it really easy to publish the app on the App Store. Plus, no maintenance is required as App My Site takes care of all of it. So what are you waiting for? Check out App My Site through the top link in the description and start creating your app today. This next one is not really useful, but I still thought it'd be fun to show off. It's called Carrier Vanity Name, and all it does is it lets you change the name of your wireless carrier throughout your entire device. <laughs> Just imagine the possibilities. Extinguish is way more useful and a lifesaver for your battery. It lets you black out the screen without actually locking it. It overlays a little button, and whenever you press it, the screen turns off without actually going into standby. Then I can just press the volume key to bring the screen back to life. It's that easy and it comes in handy for those who don't have a YouTube premium account but still want to listen to a video with the screen off to preserve a bit of battery. Or if you're downloading a large file and you need the app to stay in the foreground, I can start the download while the screen is blackened. Pretty sweet. I get super annoyed by some phones like Samsung that don't let me see the Wi-Fi password to any of my past saved networks. Super frustrating when I just want to tell my friend the password and don't feel like doing the tedious QR code scan. That's why I use Wi-Fi list because it lets me see all the passwords from the Wi-Fi networks I've joined in the past. And sure, it does suck that it costs a dollar to download, but it's definitely worth it if you get these frequent frustrations. Plus, I just dropped 50 promo codes over on my Patreon so that you can get it for free. I'm sure the majority of us love using dark mode. It looks great and can stretch the battery life immensely, the only problem is that it's inconsistent, especially regarding apps. Even after all these years, there are still a ton of apps that don't support a dark mode. So with an app called Dark with a Q, I can force most of them to have a dark interface. It may not have the best implementation, but it still saves your eyes at night. Plus some OEMs still don't let you schedule the dark theme. So in those circumstances, I use Auto Dark to let me switch between the light and dark modes based on the time of day. The Play Store isn't the only library for finding great apps. F-Droid is another excellent option with many amazing free and open source applications, most of which are not even in the Play Store. And if you download F-Droid Privilege Extension, it will allow F-Droid to install and uninstall apps without needing your approval. So just like the Play Store, it can auto-update apps in the background. Pretty amazing! You also won't need to have the unknown sources toggle enabled within your system settings just to download an app. And if you're instead using Droidify, an F-Droid agent that makes the interface material you, it's already got a privileged extension baked into the code to have it start auto-updating apps. You just need to grant it access within the Shizuku app. Then within Droidify settings, you need to change the installation type to Shizuku and then just restart the app. That's it. I've always been a fan of material you theming because having the UI match the colors of my wallpaper makes the software much more personal and exciting. But sometimes the color choice is ugly and makes the UI look bad. And sure, you can choose from a few pre-selected color palettes, but with Repainter, you can completely customize the material you theming. You can select colors from an open color palette and even adjust the colorfulness and brightness of the background so that everything pops more it really takes customization to the next level. There's also a Pixel exclusive feature that no other phone has, but I still wish that it came to other phones as well because it's so useful. It's called Now Playing, and all it does is it listens to ambient music around you and displays the song's artist and title on the lock screen, basically replacing Shazam. Luckily, Ambient Music Mod brings the same magic to any other Android device running Android 9 or higher. It works the same way, but it's not as accurate as Google's version since you are limited to its current catalog of recognized songs, which is stored locally on your phone. Still, it gets updated fairly frequently, so it's not entirely useless. Most phones don't allow you to remap the buttons to launch different actions, but with Keymapper, you can. 
I, for one, remap the volume down key so that whenever I double click it, it'll launch the digital assistant. And with the press of the volume up and then down key, it'll bring down the notification panel. Pretty awesome. Plus the remapping doesn't just stop at your phone's buttons. To take it even further, Keymapper can remap hardware buttons on Bluetooth connected devices. It's not guaranteed to work with every device, but it's still worth a shot. And finally, for the most powerful and valuable Shizuku app I've ever used, System UI Tuner unlocks a massive library of hidden settings and features found through our Android. You can turn off your heads up notifications, enable the double tap to launch camera gesture if your phone doesn't support it, remove the status bar and nav bar within any of your apps for an immersive experience, customize the airplane mode so that it only disables certain radios when you turn it on, remove any system icons from the status bar, and even bring back that yellow tint that we used to have when we enabled night mode on older versions of Android. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more unique features that you can glamor over. Just be aware that not every setting works for every Android version or every OEM, especially if you're running more recent versions of Android like Android 14 or 13. But give it a shot anyways, it's free. Anyways, those are the best Android apps that require Shizuku to run. Now let's talk about how you can get Shizuku up and running on your device to try out all these apps. There are multiple ways to do this. You can go on your computer and type an ADB command, or if you have root, you can simply grant it access. But for those who don't have these privileges, here's how to do it locally on your phone. First, download Shizuku from the Play Store. Then go into the system settings and enable the developer options. Here are the directions if you're not sure how to enable this hidden menu. Next, go into Shizuku and select Pairing, then Developer Options. Scroll down until you see Wireless Debugging and go into that menu. Enable it and select Pair Device with Pairing Code. From there, you should see Menu pop up with a code and a notification that says Pairing Service Found. Type in the Pairing Code within that notification and hit Send. From there, it should say Pairing Successful and once it does, jump back into the Shizuku app and on the main screen, tap on Start. It'll do its thing, and then you should see some new menus pop up, along with one that says Shizuku is running. Finally, to authorize those Shizuku apps, go into the second menu and enable whichever ones you'd like. Pretty simple. Just keep in mind that whenever you restart your phone or your phone dies, you'll need to do this process all over again. That's unless you have root. Thumbs up if you found this tutorial to be helpful. Either way, thanks for sticking with me till the end, and be sure to check out this video for some more awesome mod apps. I'll also include the Pixel 7 Pro, which is the device that I used in this video within YouTube's prior tech feature in the lower left corner of this video, sponsored by YouTube themselves. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!